हेलो स्टूडेंट्स कंटिन्यूइंग विद माय लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन एकेटीयू एनर्जी साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग यूनिट फॉर कन्वेंशनल एंड नॉन कन्वेंशनल सोर्सेज ऑफ एनर्जी इन लेक्चर वन आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट अप्रोक्सीमेटली ऑल द वेरियस सोर्सेज ऑफ एनर्जी अवेलेबल ऑन अर्थ द रिन्यूएबल नॉन रिन्यूएबल विंड सोलर वेव टाइडल and now i am continuing my discussion on fluid energy and i am briefing you certain formulas related to fluid energy and how they create pressure difference okay let me continue now i explained you in my previous lecture uh, about the properties of fluid that thermodynamic properties of fluids are that they are they have density temperature internal energy pressure specific volume and specific weight fluids do not have a fixed space a uh, shape and they very easily get deformed or they take the shape of vessel or container in which they are put the mechanical properties of fluid are viscosity and surface tension viscosity is a measure of fluids resistance to flow it was asked in section a define viscosity and you can expect a numerical on this formula of viscosity which i am just going to do with you so fluids resist the relative motion of immersed objects through them as well as to the motion of layers with differing velocities within them so viscosity is given by what is force upon area pressure or shearing stress and velocity gradient that means rate of change of velocity with distance gradient in physics means slope so viscosity is mathematically given by shearing stress to velocity gradient and stress is force upon area gradient is del v by del z so force upon area is equal to viscosity into del v by del z force is also known as mass into acceleration from newton's law so i put acceleration is rate of change of velocity here a i have put as del v by del t so i get force upon area is equal to coefficient of viscosity into del v by del z this is important you can be asked to define viscosity or you can be given a very simple numerical on this also in section a not numerical but definition section b a numerical so the standard unit of viscosity is pascal second and uh, uh, one pascal uh, 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 the most common unit of viscosity is dyne second per square centimeter and this is known as poise this can be asked in section a define poise and uh, 10 poise is equal to 1 pascal here i have given few relationships now continuity equation it is defined as the product of cross sectional area of pipe and the velocity of fluid at given point along the pipe is constant how do how do we get this continuity equation a into v equal to constant c look at this diagram here whatever amount of water has entered here only that much amount will exit out here yes the shape can vary the velocity can vary that is all so that means as per the principle of continuity equation water is flowing continuously the product of area into velocity is a constant section a question it can be asked and section a question again what is the principle of conservation of energy in 
fluid dynamics. So Bernoulli's principle states that the total mechanical energy of the moving fluid is a constant and it represents the principle of conservation of energy in fluid dynamics given by pressure plus half rho v square plus rho g h is equal to a constant. P is pressure, half rho v square I can correlate to kinetic energy and rho g h I can relate to gravitational potential energy. So v, the velocity with which the liquid has entered uh, my uh, tube or it has entered uh, my uh, pipe or wherever I am doing my experiment. Rho is my density of fluid. H is my height of con uh, container or my experimental apparatus. G is acceleration due to gravity. Now, this is a constant. Pressure plus half rho v square plus rho g h. So this is also known as Bernoulli's equation, also known as statement of conservation of energy for flowing fluids. And also P here represents pressure energy, half rho v square represents kinetic energy per unit volume because kinetic energy is half mv square. Mass is volume into density. I am writing kinetic energy per unit volume. Rho g h, potential energy per unit volume. This is very important. Section A question, very important. What are the different terms? Which expression represents principle of conservation of energy in fluid dynamics? What is Bernoulli's principle? Write the mathematical expression of Bernoulli's principle. Very, very important. Types of fluid flows, steady, unsteady, laminar, turbulence. Turbulence means like you say uh, the whole... Uh, uh, streamline flow uh, loses its streamline motion and the particles are not following their path in a sequence. Uniform is still the time it is running in a uniform way, then non-uniform, compressible, incompressible, rotational, irrotational, one, two, and three dimensional. One, one line definition for each. In fact, if this question comes, you make this table like this, this uh, uh, flow diagram and here only you can write one line explanation for the same. This will fetch you very good amount of marks. Steady and unsteady flows in which the fluid characteristics like velocity, pressure, density, etc. at a point do not change with time. Unsteady flow in which the fluid velocity, pressure, density at a point changes with time. Uniform and non-uniform flow in which the velocity at a given time does not change with respect to space. Non-uniform velocity at any time changes. Lamina in which the fluid particles move along well-defined paths of streamline. Turbulent, irregular, zigzag, compressible, density of fluid is changing. You can compress it. Incompressible, density is not changing. Rotational, fluid particles while flowing along the streamline also rotate about their own axis. Irrotational, they do not rotate. One dimensional, such as velocity water flowing through a single uh, directional pipe. Two dimensional, where uh, you have just spread the uh, water in which the velocity becomes a function of time and two rectangular space coordinates. And when it is taking three mutually perpendicular directions, then it is three dimensional flow. This is a big uh, mm, uh, demarcation. You can accordingly see how many marks the question is and then write your answer. Lifting force. 
Now, have you seen lifting force acts on a body in the fluid and it can be simply given by the formula F is equal to half rho V square A into lifting coefficient. This force is same as which I derived with you in the previous lecture here. And you don't need to uh, go into higher details of this formula, but yes, here. Wind energy formula here, lifting force, and whichever coefficient they ask, just multiply it with that coefficient to get the answer. So, lifting force here becomes uh, Cl into half rho V square A, where Cl is lifting coefficient. Drag force, it can be Cd half rho V square into a, where your CD is the drag coefficient lift. A fluid flowing around the surface of an object applies a force against it. It makes no difference whether the fluid is flowing past a stationary body or the body is moving through a stationary volume of fluid. Lift is the component of this force that is perpendicular to the oncoming flow direction. So lift is always accompanied by a drag force. Here, look at this diagram, see. You are lifting, so this will be accompanied by a drag force. You can take the example that common meaning of the word lift means to uh, lift opposite the weight. Or lift can be in any direction with respect to gravity. Simple English meaning uthana, lift. And when an aircraft is cruising in a straight and level flight, most of the lift is opposing the gravitational effect. And when an aircraft is climbing, descending or banking in a turn, the lift is tilted with respect to the vertical. Look here in this diagram, you are seeing it. It is tilted with respect to the vertical. Lift may also act as a down force in some aerobatic uh, maneuvers or on the wing of a racing car. Lift may also be largely horizontal, for example, in a sailing ship. So lift is defined as the component of the aerodynamic force that is perpendicular to the flow of direction and drag is the component that is parallel to the flow of direction. This I have discussed with you. This question was actually asked in the you exam. So uh, once again, conventional, non-conventional, the non-renewable ones are the conventional sources of energy. The renewable ones are the non-conventional sources. Conventional go more for commercial and industrial applications. Non-conversial are the household applications. Conventional example, fossil fuel, non-conventional solar energy. Now wind energy are uh, mainly, uh, three types, utility scale wind, disturbed or small wind, and the offshore wind. This you will, wind power of wind energy, you will discuss, we will discuss again with wind turbines. This question has been asked in AKTU 2021 paper. What are, how are wind turbines defined? Explain neatly. First, understand, what do wind turbines do, on what principle they are based, and then I will explain you the diagram. Wind, hava. Wind turbines work on the simple principle that instead of using electricity to make wind, like a fan, what is a fan doing? Mechanical energy is getting converted. First, we are switching on the fan. That means we are giving it electric energy. Electric energy is being converted to mechanical energy to run that fan. But here, we will do the opposite. Wind turbines will use wind to make electricity. Wind will turn the propeller like blades of a turbine around the rotor, which spins a generator and it will create electricity. Wind is... Uh, uh, this, wherever we have to set up the plant, we have to see many things. Firstly, that wind turbine turns wind energy into electricity 
using the aerodynamic force from the rotor blades which works like an airplane wing or helicopter rotor blade the force of the lift is stronger than the drag and this causes the rotor to spin look at this diagram here wind mills are usually uh, they first require one big long tower on which they can be placed because this place there will be no obstruction to the wind if the tower height is less then buildings etc can become an obstruction to the blades to get sufficient amount of wind to rotate and they are fitted with low speed shaft high speed shaft a generator and rotor and blades so when wind starts flowing the blades like fans start moving create energy and this energy is converted into electricity the energy needs will be determined by the size of the turbine wind turbine economize the nets are maximized with the project size according to which they are designed regardless of the project size projects connected to the electrical grid will require utility approvals and may require grid impact studies before the construction can begin now types of wind turbines are basically the two types horizontal and vertical horizontal axis turbines are what many people picture when they are thinking of wind turbines most commonly they are having three blades like you can say your simple fan and these blades are mounted on these long uh, high uh, ended poles so that wind comes and these blades start rotating and they create energy this vertical wind turbines if you can look at it the diagram mo looks more like the egg beater style it is not having only three blades the diagram is the positioning of the vertical axis wind turbines the setup is a bit different from the traditional ones and the residential scale on site energy uses less than 10 kilowatt self commercial scales also go in for 10 to 50 kilowatt it depends on what type of uh, blades you require and the turbine setup as per your application like the residential wind turbines may work as supplementary power supply large turbines will require big towers between 80 and 140 feet tall above ground level small wind electric systems can be used for small residential societies uh, for functioning power industrial corporations again are going to require big big wind turbines the offshore wind turbines are able to capture large amount of ocean winds and generate vast amount of energy the disturbed winds when they are working even they manage to generate electricity wind farms look at this picture can you see large number of wind turbines in one place this is known as a wind farm so large number of wind turbines built close together is referred to as a wind farm and this sends electricity to the grid or you can say a wind farm is a group of wind turbines in the same location used for production of electricity geothermal geo geography thermal uh, thermodynamics or thermal physics that means that heat from the sent internal energy of the earth surface can also be used to generate electricity and they work on the principle like coal on nuclear power plant and it is geothermal energy which is being utilized here to run my turbine and convert it into electricity like you must have heard earth having hot spot areas 
where molten rocks are formed in the earth's crust and they are pushed up because of geological changes so when underground water comes in contact with this hot spot steam is produced this steam like steam engine it runs full one engine it has lot of uh, power so the steam is routed through a pipe to a turbine and it generates electricity look here underground production well for steam water extraction this steam has been used to run this turbine and then an alternator is attached to it to give you electricity in far off places and for a cooling system has been set up along with it so that in case excess heat at times get flows the cooling system can cool it down this type of block diagram is the general diagram for the three types of geothermal power plants one uses the dry steam to run this turbine turbine generates electricity and one is the flash cycle steam plant these types are most common flash means they are coming occurring in uh, naturally occurring high quality steam has been used to run this turbine and generate electricity binary cycle plants make use of lower temperature water than the other two types of plants this question has been asked and it is important differentiate between geothermal power plant and thermal power plant see this is a thermal power plant here the thermal or the heat has been used to boil create steam steam runs this turbine compare it with the steam engine generates electricity and a cooler here now the difference between the two is that geothermal is utilizing the energy of the earth the natural one but my thermal power plant is utilizing the burning of fossil fuels so hot spot areas where molten rocks are formed in the earth's crust or the underground water with hot spot steam is used in geothermal to generate electricity in thermal power fossil fuels are burnt these are less flexible thermal power plant are more flexible geothermal cost is high because lot of digging beneath the earth goes on to get the uh, energy generation of the earth but thermal power plant the cost is low the geothermal are used for power generation thermal ones are used for industrial processes let me discuss one very simple numerical basically this numerical is very simple but it requires a bit of a uh, conversion factor so that i will clear you in this numerical do it along with me a 1000 megawatt that means if i convert this into watt how much do i need to do 1000 megawatt so geothermal power plant is operated for 11 months in a year now what is the problem with this numerical i will either have to convert this 11 months into hours this is what i have done see months 12 months 11 months 12 uh, 24 hours in one day and one month 30 days so 24 into 13 into 11 7920 hours one month is for maintenance shut down the cost of electricity supplied is rupees 3 per kilowatt hour calculate the total earnings total energy generated megawatt into hour how much have i been given 1000 megawatt into how many hours 7920 hours total cost of energy we take usually cost of energy in kilowatt hours into rupees per kilowatt hour so for kilo i will have to multiply this 
सेवन नाइन टू जीरो इंटू टेन टू द पावर ऑफ थ्री बाय हाउ मच रुपीज थ्री पर किलो वॉट आर इन टू थ्री टू गेट माई आंसर Ocean thermal energy, or simply OTEC, it has been asked. Ten mark question has been asked on OTEC twice. It is the process of using ocean itself as a solar collector. This technology is also still under lot of research and utilizes the slight temperature gradient between the warm surface of the ocean and the cooler water deeper down. Why does this temperature difference occur in oceans? Oceans are all uh, exposed to sunlight. So what happens is that the sun. Uh, increases the upper layer of water temperature of the upper layer of water while the lower layer is still cool so this del t according to thermodynamics i can also use it to generate electricity so here my water has got heated this heat energy i have used in running my turbine turbine has helped me in creating electricity and for cooling i have used a condenser cold sea water and even an ammonia pump because what happens is at times large amount of energy gets generated and i need to keep a cooling system always when i am setting up an energy plant so otec or ocean thermal energy plant it operates like any other thermal plant they require the use of rankine cycle it has been discussed in unit 1 warm surface sea water heats up some fluid with a low boiling point and this temperature difference gives rise to generation of electricity environmental impact of otec is that it is temp uh, it is nature dependent that means like the day it is cold or thunderstorm is there and up, uh, upper portion of the ocean has not heated up then it is not going to work it depends upon weather and climatic changes okay tidal powers are harnessing the energy from the tidal force and wave action in order to generate electricity unlike other energy flows it is predictable source of energy because tides occur at expected time of the year and this predictability has an advantage over wind and solar power because wind and solar power are nature dependent any calamity and they both fail okay so the tidal ones dominate here the three basic ones are dynamic tidal power which is a technology that uses the difference between potential energy and kinetic energy tidal steam generator makes use of moving water to power turbines tidal barrage work similarly to hydroelectric dams benefits are it is not much uh, uh, having environmental impact but yes drawback is that they are very costly wave power i will continue this in the next lecture thank you please subscribe to my channel